Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. <laughs> that was Jim Jordan. <laughs> You just said he seeks to obstruct D.A. Alvin Bragg's prosecution of defendant Donald Trump by taking his clown show to New York City. That is the absolute best way to put it, isn't it? I mean, just a complete ridiculous stunt. And it's so transparent. I mean, you know, he's trying to interfere with and obstruct and chill Alvin Bragg in his prosecution of Donald Trump. You know, it, it, it really infuriates me that Reportedly, he's going to parade crime victims out um, in front of the public to try to beat up on Alvin Bragg. And using crime victims as props for political gain is despicable. And he happens to be violating the Constitution because, Steph, you know, I invite everybody to read and reread the Constitution. Nowhere in there does it enumerate powers to the federal government to oversee or interfere with state court prosecutions this is and I, it's absurd it's obscene and it's an abuse of office and of power and of position and i loved uh, mayor adams said maybe i can give him some tips on controlling crime since you know crime is what three times as much in uh, many of the J jim jordan's ohio cities as it is in new york but anyway let's talk about you said the uh, new york da alvin bragg sues jim jordan to force him to stop obstructing the prosecution of defendant trump because hashtag justice matters so this was a good move and a, and a ballsy move, right? And I'm glad he, he did it. Talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he has really three options. One option is to do nothing. I, I'm glad Alvin Bragg is doing something. The second option is to actually present evidence to the grand jury of what Jim Jordan is doing to obstruct the administration of, of the government. Because that's a federal crime in New Excuse me, that's a state crime in New York if you interfere in governmental administration. And the law specifically says, if you interfere by trying to impede or intimidate a governmental official, a prosecutor, in the performance of their official duties, you're violating New York law. Steph, if Jim Jordan went to Times Square and robbed somebody, he should be held accountable. He is trying to rob the people of New York of justice in this prosecution. He's violating New York state law. So Alvin Bragg could begin presenting evidence of that to the grand jury. I don't know that he will. Or his third option, which is the one he took, was to try to bring suit to get Jim Jordan to stop violating the Constitution. Yeah. Well, and also you make the point, Jim Jordan, who criminally defied a congressional subpoena issues congressional subpoenas um and you said new york da bragg calls him out for obstructing the prosecution of trump um you ask a question will jordan ever be held accountable for his crimes that's what i wonder too or i mean how close are we or not to you know these these people ever seeing any any justice that are in congress well you know if bragg chooses to try to hold jordan accountable that's that's one possibility and the other is Jack Smith, because he really continues to go scorched earth after both the insurrection and the documents crimes. And if Jordan has criminal responsibility for the insurrection, I have some confidence Jack Smith will get after that. Yeah. Um, here's one bad thing, because you know everybody. Uh, you tweeted, so the judge who drew the Bragg versus Jordan case, Judge Mary Kay, uh, I can't pronounce that, Velasco? Visco Shield. Visco okay. Shield. Okay. Is a Trump appointee who worked for 33 years in, quote, general commercial litigation in New York City and whose one notable case appears to be dismissing a defamation suit by Karen McDougal against Tucker Carlson. Um, we talk about this almost every week, Glenn, but it's one of the worst things that, you know, I feel from the Trump era is just this complete politicization of justice, right? Just, we have to always go, oh, great, it's a Trump judge. There goes the abortion pill. Oh, it's a Trump judge. There goes the mask mandate on, on you know, flights. I mean, it is really um it's it, it, it's terrifying isn't it to just be that afraid of how politicized the justice system has become yeah he has so degraded the quality of the federal judiciary that it's going to take us generations to dig out and repair now let me add i don't know if judge visco Chiel is going to be an honest broker of the law or not when i i did a little bit of digging you know i, I find it curious that somebody with no government experience, no public service experience, but was in general commercial litigation in New York City for 33 years. Might there be some tentacles that 
intertwine with Donald Trump's business interests in New York City when that's your only kind of professional experience? I don't know how that qualifies you to be a judge. But, you know, and then when you look at really the only notable case you could find was when she threw out Karen McDougal's defamation suit against Tucker Carlson. And and she did it because she said, well, nobody believes Tucker Carlson's lies and hyperbole. Well, yeah, I'll bet the Fox viewers believe his lies and hyperbole. And that acted to the detriment of Karen McDougal. So I don't really care for that ruling. This gives me reason to be concerned. Let's see how she presides over the the Alvin Bragg lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's, let's be hopeful. Um, you also talked about as defendant Trump's threats to judge and DA continue. It's time for the judge to order him to stop. I mean, it, once again, something no one else gets away with, right? What I mean, do you, do you mean a gag order, or talk to us about that? I do mean a gag order, and I don't want to shift topics. But you know, you look at the E. Jean Carroll defamation suit that's about to go to trial later this month. Donald Trump again tried to get the judge to not impanel an anonymous jury, right? I want to know the identities of these jurors who are going to sit in judgment against me. And that judge, Judge Lewis Kaplan, said, no, look at the threats you're leveling against Judge Marchand in your criminal prosecution. Look at the threats you're leveling against District Attorney Alvin Bragg. I will not disclose the identity of these jurors so you can do the same thing to them. So there's a judge, Steph, who's acknowledging in the strongest terms what Donald Trump is doing. And that judge is taking some remedies, right, putting some safety measures in place to address it. However, nobody will order Donald Trump to shut up. And that's what a judge needs to do. And there is a basis to do it. You narrowly tailor the limitations on his speech. You say you can't threaten judges or their families. You can't threaten district attorneys or their families. You can't go after jurors. And if you do, I'll consider upping the ante and maybe even putting you in jail pending trial. This is the way every other litigant in the country would be dealt with, but they continue to deal with Donald Trump wearing these kid gloves. Yeah, and he has incited actual violence before and continues to. Republicans say they won't cut Social Security, Medicare, or Medicaid. But can honest, hard-working middle-class Americans really believe what these politicians say? Republicans said they wouldn't overturn Roe v. Wade. Here's what Supreme Court Justices Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Coney Barrett said during their Senate confirmation hearings. Roe v. Wade is a precedent of the United States Supreme Court. A good judge will consider it as precedent of the United States Supreme Court. Roe v. Wade. It's settled as a precedent of the Supreme Court. Roe is not a super precedent, but that doesn't mean that Roe should be overruled. Well, we saw how that turned out. They played us for fools. Tell your elected officials to keep their hands off of our Social Security and health care benefits. 